Welcome doctors. This is our second lecture for ENT and it is in the nasal part. Today we will talk about the diseases of the external nose, nasal cavity and nasal septum and it's me again Dr. Muhammad Gamil. Well, there is a general classification of ENT diseases, and you can use it in other departments. It is very important. When you are asked about any of the symptoms of any disease, and you and get asked about what are the causes, you should always think like, it, this cause may be congenital, traumatic, inflammatory and inflammatory is it acute is it chronic neoplasm or neoplastic is it benign or malignant or other so in symptomatology when you get asked about anything like maybe in our department like what's called what causes nasal obstruction for example you have to think nasal obstruction it may be congenital Okay, like one, two, three, four. It may be traumatic, like one, two, three, four, two, and inflammatory. Is it acute? Is it chronic? Neoplastic, benign, malignant, other. So always put this broad classification in your head. It will get easier for you to answer mo lots of questions in medicine in general. So let's start about the congenital anomalies of the nose. There is de developmental deformities of the external nose, like a hump nose, like the first figure, as you can see this woman, she had a hump or a nasal elevation. Uh, some people call it a Roman nose. Saddle nose, at the, which is the opposite, a depressed nose. Dropped nose, as you can see the third figure. And twisted nose. Well, twisted nose is like the nose going to the right, to the left, it's not in the midline. How can we treat any of these? All are treated by a rhinoplasty operation. In public, they call it a, a nose job. And as you all know, lots of famous people and artists do it nowadays. There is congenital anomalies of the external nose also, like absence of the nose. The nose is not present, a baby born without a nose. It's called aplasia. Or cleft nose, which is a very rare condition, which varies from a shallow fissure of the dorsum of the nose to complete division of the nose, bifid nose. Watch it, the second figure. There is a, another congenital anomaly of the external nose called the dermoid cyst. It's a midline cystic swelling over the nasal bridge, which is non-compressible, non-pulsatile, and CT scan is diagnostic. Also, this is a, another congenital external nose deformity called glioma. It's 60% external, 30% 60% extranasal, 30% intranasal, and 10% both. It is solid, it's gray or purple, and non-compressible, non-pulsatile, and does not increase with a compression of the internal jugular vein. This is important to compare it with the next one, the encephalic seal, which is herniation of meninges and brain tissues through the cranial defect. The encephalocele is bluish, 
compressible, here's a, here's a difference, pulsatile, another difference, increase with straining and pressure on the internal jugular vein. Now we pass from the external nodes to the nasal cavity. We have congenital coenal atresia and hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. What's congenital coenal atresia? Congenital coenal atresia, do you remember the coenal we talked about in the lecture of the anatomy? Congenital coenal atresia is closure of the posterior nasal opening the quana, which may be unilateral, it's 75% or bilateral 25%, bony in 90% or membranous in 10%, complete or incomplete. What are the symptoms of a baby born with a coanal atresia? If it's unilateral, it's usually asymptomatic. The, mostly the mother de, does not detect it, but it can detect it by unilateral nasal obstruction and unilateral nasal discharge further in life. Ah, but what about bilateral? Bilateral is an emergency. Why it's an emergency? Because the neonate is a obligatory nasal breather during the first few weeks. What does that mean? A baby, when it's born, it cannot breathe from her or his mouth because the larynx is high and the, the epiglottis lies behind the soft palate. So it's an emergency bilateral obstruction of the of the nose will cause cyclic asphyxia. The neonate strives to breathe while the lips are tightly closed. He passed to cyanosis, increased CO2, mouth relaxation, mouth opens again with few gulping respiration, the mouth closes again, and so on. If the neonate is not managed properly, death from respiratory obstruction will occur. If the neonate passes the asphyxia, there may be, if it passes asphyxia, which is rare, the, the patient will have bilateral nasal obstruction, bilateral persistent mucoid nasal discharge, the airflow test is no fogging, failure of pathogen, passage of a rubber caster or nasal drops through any of the nostrils, and a discopic examination shows closure of posterior coen. Usually you don't see that. Usually you don't see that because it's an emergency. This is a very important condition. Bilateral, again, bilateral coenal atresia is an emergency and it requires treatment as soon as possible. Here you can see on the left side <laughs> and uh, coenal atresia, on the left side photos, a coenal atresia, the nasal cavity is totally blocked. And on the right side, you see the opening after surgery or after correction. What's the investigation for that? We'll do CT scan. Okay, CT scan. Is the most accurate investigation to detect coanal atresia. Before we should, we used to do plain X-ray with a dye, but it's not done anymore. How to treat coanal atresia? Bilateral cases, as we said, it's an emergency case. We have to maintain the airway using either. A McGovern nipple, which is a bo baby bottle nipple with an open tip, or an oropharyngeal airway. Early, we do perforation of the atherectic 
plate by a sinoscope and endotracheal intubation or tracheostomy may be needed at the first days of the life. Late, we'll treat it by transnasal excision by sinoscope and this goes for the bilateral and the unilateral cases. Unilateral cases, we will do it at ease and we will choose the age of the patient, maybe three years, four years, with the noses as well developed and examination and the surgery will be, me, will be easier. Now we pass from congenital diseases to trauma. First traumatic condition is the foreign body infection. Usually it happens in children. And it may be vegetable foreign bodies such as a pea or a bean which has fatty acids and cause irritation causing inflammatory reaction or non-vegetable foreign bodies such as button, bead and disc batteries. There are lots of kids we see in our clinics doing that. What happens to a patient when he inserts a foreign body in his nose? Usually he puts it in one, just in one side. So there will be a unilateral offensive nasal discharge, maybe blood stained, which is pathognomonic. You will see unilateral discharge is blood stained from just coming from one side. In a child, you have to think of foreign body and unilateral persistent nasal obstruction because the foreign body is just in one side. And when we look at the patient or signs, you will see the offensive purulent nasal discharge and the foreign body may be seen clinically just by anterior anoscopy or by endoscopic examination. Can you see this photo? You have a nose showing inflammatory reaction on one side and the <coughs> on the right side of the nose and the left side looks completely normal. This is pathognomonic. And this is usually pa passed uh, by pediatrician. They don't look at it at we, as we do. When a mother uh, takes her ch child or someone to a clinician and she says the patient has nasal discharge or nasal infection or nasal obstruction, usually if you don't foreign body minded or or it's not in your uh, mind, you can pass it at any uh, infection in the nose. What's the complication of foreign body? What happens if you just leave a foreign body? Rhinitis and sinusitis, of course. Formation of a rhinolith. What's a rhinolith? A rhinolith is a nasal stone. There will, be, there will happen a precipitation of calcium salts from the nasal secretion on a foreign body, blood clot, or insipsated mucus. The treatment is removal by a hook or forceps. Generally, it's easy and necessary if the patient is uncooperative. Yeah. Here is removing or oh, removal of a foreign body using a hook. The next traumatic condition in the fraction of the nasal bone. The nasal bones are one of the most commonly fractured bones in the body. It's usually compound, accompanied by the laceration of the skin and the nasal mucosa. And it's usually caused by direct trauma to the nose as a blow or a car accident. What are the symptoms? Of course, there is history of trauma and pain, transit and the time of the injury, 
epistaxis due to injury of nasal mucosa. Epistaxis is bleeding from the nose. We didn't discuss that yet. We will take it at the lecture by itself. So again, there is a history of trauma, pain, transit and the time of the injury. Maybe the patient is coming to you with no pain at that at the time, but he had pain with the trauma, epistaxis, and you will see a deformity due to edema, the, the nose is edematous, or displacement of the nasal bones, and nasal obstruction due to septal deviation or hematoma. What we will you see? By inspection, he will see external swelling due to the edema, deformity due to external swelling and displacement of the nasal bones. When the blow comes from the front, the nasal bones are depressed. When the blow comes from the side, the nasal bone is deviated or deviated, and maybe black eyes due to periorbital ecchymosis. And bipalpation, there is tenderness and crepitus. What's crepitus? It's cracking sound on palpation of the bones. And by anterior anoscopy, you will see mucosal laceration, maybe, maybe not, and septal deviation and hematoma, and maybe, maybe not. On those photos, you will see that frontal trauma, the depressed nasal bone, the first two photos. And on the second two photos, you will see a lateral trauma with deviation of the nose. <coughs> yeah. Watch the black eyes or the ecchymosis around the eyes on both patients. By investigation, we'll do um, an x-ray. You can see the fractured nasal bone, and it's important as a medical legal because usually this is due to a car accident or a fight. So you have to confirm and prove it by a plain x-ray to legalize the condition. How to treat fractured nasal bones? If it's recent, in the first hours before development of the edema, we will do immediate reduction either manually by your hands or with an instrument called Walchamfer forceps followed by fixation. Okay. If it's intermediate, if the patient is coming to you when the edema already masks the landmark, the, the whole face is limited, the nose is limited, you cannot see what to do. Wait for one week until the edema subsides and then treatment at recent cases manually or by Walsham forceps. If the patient is co comes due late, like after two weeks, three weeks, one month and, and it's already deviated and uh, deformed, well, this is called malunited fracture. So a rhinoplasty operation is have to be done to refracture and reduce and fixate the nasal bones. Watch the figures. Septal hematoma. Septal hematoma is collection of blood between the septal cartilage and its precondrium, pre usually due to direct trauma to the nose as a blow or a car accident, remember the nasal trauma, or septum operation, a submucous resection and septoplasty operation. This will be discussed later. The patient complain usually of a trauma or a surgery and if we look by our eyes the signs you will see a bilateral smooth red soft swelling of the septum watch <coughs> the photo 
What's the complication of leaving a septal hematoma? It will happen a cartilage necrosis of the nasal septum, supra tip depression. If after necrosis of the nasal septal cartilage, there will, there will happen depression because it is a support of the nose. Our secondary infection causing septal abscess. Treatment, uh, you give the patient antibiotic and incision and drainage of the hematoma, tight nasal packing to avoid collection, to avoid recollection of blood. Now we go from <coughs> congenital diseases, traumatic diseases to inflammation. We will start by the external nose by the first thing is the front closes of the nasal vestibule. What is it? Or what's the definition? It's a localized separative infection of a hair follicle in the skin lining of the vestibule. Do you remember the vestibule in the anatomy? It contains hair vibrisi. So it's, when it gets infected, it causes frankulosis. Usually the organism is uh, the organism coding that is Staphylococcus aureus and usually predisposed by scratching of the skin of the vestibule by nose picking and it increases in depleting diseases as diabetes mellitus. The patient complains of severe throbbing nasal pain and by examination you will see a localized red tender swelling in the vestibule with diffuse redness and edema of the nasal tip. What to do as an investigation for such a patient? You should do the blood sugar to exclude diabetes mellitus, especially if it is recurrent. Can it cause complication? Yes. Remember the dangerous area of the face. The fruncles lie in the dangerous area of the face. Therefore, it can be complicated by cavernous sinus thrombophlebitis, especially if the fruncle is squeezed. How to treat it? By systemic antibiotics and analgesics, local treatments and antibiotic ointments, and surgical drainage <coughs> is done only if it forms an abscess, i.e. fluctuation occurs. Here is a photo of a frankulosis. You can see it in the vestibule. It's like a swelling. Nasal septal abscess. Do you remember the septal hematoma? It's a bit close, but it gets infected. So it's collection of pus between the septal cartilage and per pericondium. How it's caused? It's caused by secondary infection of the septal hematoma we talked about before in that in the same lecture. What are the general symptoms? The patient has fever, headache, anorexia, malaise and severe dropping nasal pain, bilateral nasal obstruction, and by examination you find fever, tender nasal dorsum, bilateral smooth red tender soft swelling of the septum, and this condition can be complicated as a septal hematoma by cartilage necrosis causing tip depression <clears throat> and if the cartilage and the mucosa had necrosis a septal perforation occurs and it should be treated as septal hematoma by antibiotics and drainage. Next visit we will start talking about rhinitis as acute chronic and reactive conditions which are the inflammations inside the nasal cavity this is the end of our lecture for t for today and
next week we will continue our inflammations of the nose and have a nice weekend and enjoy studying thank you very much